Now let us discuss this problem. So this says figure 3.65. So this figure shows a toroidal solenoid. So this is toroidal solenoid. This is a card shape. So it's a circular kind of toroid whose cross section is rectangular in nature. So now this cross section is rectangular. This is not circular. So we have discussed in the class a toroid and that is a cross section is circular in nature. This time toroid has a circular cross section, not circular cross section, but a rectangular cross section. Find the magnetic flux through this cross section. So we have to find magnetic flux through this cross section. If the current through the binding is I, so there is a current, so this current I goes, this comes again, another winding, another winding, so this I current is basically going throughout this rectangular toroid. And the total number of turn is N, so you know the total number of turns, that is capital N. Are you getting, so what are the things that is given to you, so I is given, number of turns is given, and the ratio of outer diameter to inner diameter, let us say that is R2 by R1 is given. R2 by R1 that is equals to eta that is given to you. And the height of the toroid is also given. So height let us say this is H. We have to find magnetic flux. So what is my target? My target is to find what is the flux associated with this toroid. So we have to find flux. And if you remember, we said in the class, flux is nothing but B dot ds. Now, if you remember, what is the magnetic field inside a toroid? That is an important question. If you see, now if you see this toroid from the top, what you will see? You will see this inner one, inner circle, and you will see outer circle. So, this is the outer circle you will see, if you see from the top. And you will see the inner circle. So if you see from the top, you will look two circles. So let me make this two circles. So you will have two circles here. So this is one circle you will look from the top. Another circle you will look from the top, something like this. So let us say you have to have something like this. Are you getting? So this is the another circle you are going to look. Are you getting or not? And now inner radius is let us say R1 and the outer radius is R2. So inner radius for this circle is R1. So this radius is given to you R1. And let us say outer radius is R2. Are you getting? Now if you know this radius, you can basically now let us say on the inner radius currents is coming out. And outer radius current is going in. So this is a current going in. Are you getting or not? How will you find magnetic field at any distance R from the center? If you remember, we can apply Ampere law. So let us say, a bit take the Amperean loop. So it's easy. So this is my Amperean loop. You have. Now, if you apply Amperean loop, so this distance is R. So this is mu naught I is equals to B dot dr. And now I know B is tangential at every point. So integral of B dot dr is simply mu naught I, and that is equals to B dot dr is B, that is constant, and dr is 2 pi R. And this is equals to mu naught times i. So this means b is equals to mu naught i. This divided by 2 pi r. This result you have to remember. If you remember, that's fine. Now what we will do is we want to find flux through this cross section. I want to find flux through this cross section. But the magnetic field is not constant. At this point, radius is smaller. You have different magnetic field. At this point, radius is different. Magnetic field is different. At this point, radius is different, magnetic field is different. And now, magnetic field is basically running this side. So, this is coming this direction. So, B and DS this time will be same. 
regating or not so b is this side and ds is also this side so b dot ds is making a zero degree angle so let us try to find flux through a rectangular cross section so if you look this rectangular cross section it is somewhere here and this is your center so this point is center now through this center magnetic field varies so let us say if i have a distance x and let us take a dx thickness so if i go from here to x distance and this thickness is dx so if i take dx thickness what is the elemental area so elemental area i can write so this is the my elemental area so i will have elemental area and that is basically equals to ds and dx time height height is given to you so this height is h initially it is given so h time dx so this is elemental area now what is the flux through this cross section d phi let us call that is b dot ds now i know b is perpendicular and ds is also perpendicular to this cross section so b dot ds is simply b ds because angle is 0 degree so b dot ds is simply b ds and now i know the b i know the ds what is b at a distance x mu naught i by 2 pi x so b is simple that is mu naught i divided by 2 pi x these are the easy problem nothing to do and dx is simply h dx and if I am interested in total flux, I have to integrate from R1 to R2. Are you getting or not? So if I integrate this R1 from R2, of course there is one thing that I have missed. What is the thing? That is number of turns. So if you apply ampere law, mu naught ni, that is B dot ds, but you have to have what is the total current? This is the current through one loop. There are n number of turns. So total current, I have to multiply this side by n. So everywhere I will have mu naught i n. So let us see this here. So this is mu naught i n. So let us say, let us take constant on our side. Mu naught i n into h. And this is simply dx by x. x goes from r1 to r2. Now if you integrate this one, so you will have mu naught. A 2 pi is also there. Mu naught i n h this divided by 2 pi and then I have to have ln x and ln r2 by r1 and r2 by r1 is given to you that is eta so simply you will have mu naught i and h divided by 2 pi ln eta so this is your final flux associated with any rectangular cross section so this is the flux flux through any of the rectangular cross section any rectangular cross section are you getting so easy one so this is any rectangular cross section now why we need integration because magnetic field was not constant this is a function of x so if you remember so you have to remember these things you have to remember this formula that is the magnetic field in a toroid that is given by mu naught i by 2 pi x and this is the distance are you getting or not so you can write the same thing in this way if you multiply by 2 in the denominator you have to multiply by 2 in the numerator so you will have mu naught i 2 mu naught i so you can write the same result something like this mu naught by 4 pi because this constant now looks like universal constant so you have 2 i and h getting 2 i n h ln eta so this is the final value we'll have and this constant i have taken outside are you getting so this is the final value